Good morning everyone, today I will show you 10 blender tips that I use in almost all of my projects. Join my Patreon, link in the description. Finding free 3D assets can be hard, especially on websites like CG Trader or TurboSquid. I mean $400 for this or $35 for these rocks? On TurboSquid it's sometimes hard to even find a model under $100. I don't say that these models are bad or overpriced, I mean people spend a lot of time making these assets and the quality is exceptional. But if you're just doing 3D as a hobby, you don't need assets that are made for production. The website I visit if I need free stuff is Sketchfab. I have no idea why this is only a thing on Sketchfab, but there are these huge libraries of mostly free models of any category you could imagine. You got cars, spaceships, rocks, cliffs and even whole environments. As long as you see the little download symbol, the thing is free to download. You obviously still have to check the license, but if it says CC0, you can do whatever you want with the asset. You are also able to filter by licenses. Most of these models are uploaded by museums, so they are perfect to be used as antique props for your render. Oh, and I've linked you some of my favorite libraries in the description below. Sometimes you want to join two meshes together and still be able to bevel the intersection. What I usually do in that case is use the knife project tool. If you want to do a cylinder, start with a circle and move it into position. Then you go into the main objects edit mode without selecting the cutter. Make sure you're in orthographic view so the perspective of your camera doesn't mess up the knife project. Next you left click your cutter in the outliner, hit F4 and type knife project. Now the cutter has been projected onto the object from your camera view. If you plan on applying a strong bevel, it's a good idea to use the knife tool to create connecting edges that are more perpendicular to the surface, or you could run into problems when beveling. The shortcut for the knife tool is K. Knife project can be used for all kinds of stuff. If you notice these weird lines after beveling, you can just inset the surrounding faces a tiny bit. Making cables and hoses in Blender is pretty easy. But what if you want to make a more detailed kind of sci-fi cable? Just model one part of the cable. It can be as detailed as you like. Once you've got a finished cable segment, you can add an array modifier. Next, you have to add a curve modifier and select your curve. Make sure that both of the objects share the same origin point. If your segments don't follow the curve, try rotating them on all axes until they do. Now you got a cable and you're also able to add more detail by duplicating the mesh in edit mode because the whole object is arrayed. The next tip is kind of expensive and by no means necessary, but it's pretty cool. So I got myself a Stream Deck. By the way, I'm not sponsored by Agato, I wish I was. Turns out the Stream Deck is great for Blender shortcuts. I can open Blender, add objects, apply modifiers, as well as changing workspaces. I'm also able to navigate my files, so I can just check what I was working on in March of 2020. And this is useful for every software that makes use of keyboard shortcuts. If you've ever tried to copy an object more than a few hundred times, you have probably noticed that Blender gets laggy really quickly. That's because your computer has to render every duplicate separately. But if you press Alt-D instead of Shift-D, you are able to have way more copies of the same object. Because you don't copy the mesh, you're just instancing it. Mesh duplicates are what create lag, not object duplicates. Oh, and if you want to create a large scale environment quickly with only one small piece of ground, you can enable proportional editing and change the type to random. The transform pivot point needs to be set to individual origins. Then select one of the objects and rotate it. If you see any gaps, just scale up the ground piece. In cycles it's pretty hard to get good lens flares and light streaks, but there is a way. Just download a lens flare texture and project it onto a plane. A color ramp node is great for adjusting the color. You can just plug the color into the alpha and use a math node to make the emission stronger. It's just a subtle difference, but I think it's worth it. 
if you're working on an object that contains a lot of different meshes but you only want to manipulate one of them with proportional editing, there is a setting called Connected Only. The name already suggests what it does. You can now work on a single mesh at a time without affecting the others. In Blender you have all these different workspaces in the menu bar, but most of them you never use anyway. You can actually reorder and delete them and even add new ones to clean up your menu bar. If you want to quickly create realistic vegetation in your scene, the G-Scatter add-on by Graswald is a great choice. Again, I'm not sponsored by Graswald either. You can download the add-on for free in the description below. After installing the add-on, you can enable it in the preferences. Press N to access the add-on in the side menu. Then you add any object as an emitter. Under distribution, you can change the viewport and render density. In the Geometry tab, you can turn off the proxy view to get a preview of what you're doing. The more layers you add, the more realistic the vegetation looks. This is the result after like two minutes of work. The last tip seems kind of obvious, but I see so many decent renders on Reddit and Instagram that could look so much better if they were color graded. I use Camera Raw in Adobe Photoshop for color grading. I have basically no idea what I'm doing, I just try to move every slider and see if it looks better afterwards. If it doesn't, I just move it back. I always like adding texture and clarity to Cycles renders. In the color mixer I usually play around with the oranges, yellows and greens. Grain is extremely important. You may be asking yourself why I'm adding noise after literally denoising the image in Blender. But this is a different kind of noise. It's more of a camera noise which makes the image feel like it was shot on a real camera. I think you can see for yourself that color grading is one of the most important aspects of creating an artwork. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and consider subscribing. And if you like really enjoyed this video, you can join my Patreon where I upload my renders in full resolution and all of my scene files. Bye!